I'm going to start a new series today. And what I want to do for those that made that decision to say, I want Jesus to be a vital part of my life. I'm not depending on the arm of men. I'm going to depend on the arm of God. Because if you made the decision to invite God back into your life, then we got to make sure that we're starting on the right foundation. Jesus told a parable about it. He said that there was this man that built his house on, the, on sand. And the storm came. And the wind blew. And it beat on his house. And the house fell. And great was the crash. But there was a wise man that built his house on the rock. And the rock is the word of God. It's the foundational principles. It's the foundation. It's building on the right foundation. The wise man that built on the right foundation, the winds came, the storms blew, but his house remains. In this life, wind is going to blow. Storms are going to come. The question isn't, are they going to come? The question is, where have you built? Have you built on the right foundation? foundation the bible says this in first corinthians chapter 3 verse 10 this is the levitz translation it says as a skillful architect and a master builder this is the apostle paul speaking he says i have by god's grace laid the foundation but someone else will be putting up the building now one of the things that you need to know about the apostle paul is that he was a church planner Paul was an apostle. He went from place to place. He began to get people saved. He built a church up. Then he handed the church over to a pastor. He would go into another area and he would do the same thing again. He would, he would create revival in the city and he'd build a church up and then he would hand it off over to a pastor. So, so Paul would, would get a revival. He'd win people to Jesus. And the only thing he would do is he would lay the right foundation. And then he would pass that then off onto another person, another pastor to build on the foundation that he laid. So he says, Wh whoever it is, wh wh what, whoever this man is, the pastor is, he must be very careful how he builds on this foundation, on the foundation that I've laid. And here's the reason, for this is the only foundation that there is. There's, there's only one foundation that, to, that you're to build your life upon, that you're to build your Christian journey on. No other foundation can be laid for this building since the foundation is Jesus Christ himself. Notice that. The foundation that Paul laid, and he said no one can build on any other foundation. The foundation is Jesus Christ himself. It, it has everything to do with what Jesus has done for you and for me through his death, his burial, and his resurrection and his ascension. Amen. So, so, it's, so, so, so we build off of the foundation of all the things Jesus accomplished through his finished work. In Psalms, it says this in verse, chapter 11, verse 3, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do if the foundations be destroyed then what can the righteous do that's a really powerful question because if the foundational principles of our life are destroyed then what ends up taking place is real simple christianity instead of being life-giving it actually starts to produce death if the foundations are destroyed if it's not about jesus anymore we turn into something that's about the law, then instead of the Spirit of God giving us life, the law of sin brings death. And so we want Christianity to be life-giving. We want God's joy and His peace, His blessings and His provision, His promises. But all of that happens as we build on the right foundation. If we change the foundations or we undermine the finished work of Jesus then we begin to build on a faulty foundation. And it's normally in a faulty foundation that we begin to waver. It's in a faulty foundation that we start to get confused. And it's like, man, I don't know what the Bible's trying to say. All those things are normally the result of something undermining the foundation of Jesus Christ. So we're going to take the next weeks and we're just going to look into six foundational principles that the Bible outlines 
that causes us, that if we will build our life on these principles, it, man, it's going to cause us to live in God's joy and his peace and his victory. It's going to cause us the, the blessings of God and the promises of God to work in our lives. We're going to start to build on the right foundation. So the Bible teaches six foundational truths that every believer is to build their life upon. We can find these in Hebrews chapter 5. We're going to start and just look at verse 12 through 14. The six truths are found a little bit later in the chapter. But I just want to start here. This is the starting place. And then we'll get into them throughout the next few weeks. It says, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. At this time, you should be a teacher. Amen. So in other words, you've been saved long enough, you should know better. <laughs> and yet, somebody needs to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need your foundation straightened out, is what he's saying. You need milk, not solid food. And isn't it interesting how Christians, man, we, we all want the heavy revies. We all want the new revelation. We all want the new thing. And then we miss the most powerful parts of Scripture. Because we need to grow up, and before we start with the solid food, we need to get the milk that causes it all to work. We've got, we got to grow up into the things of the Lord. So it goes on to tell us what this milk is. It says that anyone who lives on milk, still being an infant, amen, in other words, we just, we just gave our life to Jesus, and, and now we got to grow up in him. And so the infant gets milk, and here's the reason why they're not yet acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. Very interesting. So here goes your blanks, guys. A spiritual infant, according to this verse, is just someone that's not familiar with the teaching of of righteousness a spiritual infant is a person that is not familiar with faith righteousness that's really powerful and before we go anywhere else in our walk with god we've got to get this thing under control amen it's the one thing listen it's the milk that causes us to grow up what is it the milk is faith righteousness it has to do with you understanding that you're righteous because of what Jesus has done. Amen? And so we all have to get that as a foundation in our lives. Romans chapter 1, verse 17, it says that the gospel, in the gospel, there is righteousness that comes not from your works, not from your performance, not from how good you've been, not from any of the do's and the don'ts and the this and the that. No, this righteousness comes from God. This righteousness is a gift that God gives you. And it's revealed in the gospel. In the gospels of the good news. In, in the good news of what Jesus has done for you, there is revealed a righteousness that does not have anything to do with your works. It is a, it's a gift of righteousness that God wants to give to you. And this righteousness is by faith from first to last. So this gift of righteousness, you start your Christian journey with it, but you also finish your Christian journey with it. I've heard somebody say, they say, listen, you know, well, you start out and, you know, you got God's grace and his love. And, you know, but then afterwards, you know, you better get your life right and you better start doing these things. And, and, and we transition from grace to law very, very quick. And here the Bible tells us is that your righteousness, it starts by faith. But it also ends with faith. It is by faith from the very first day you start your journey with God to the very last day that, you, that you're on your journey before you meet him. So this doesn't change throughout your entire Christian experience. You are the righteousness of God because of a gift that God wants to give you. It's the gift of righteousness. Just as it is written, the righteous will live not by all their do's and don'ts and all their ducks lined up in a row. No, the righteous are going to live by faith in what Jesus has done for them. Now, righteousness just simply means this. Righteousness simply means right standing with God. Amen. That's all it means. So, if we're going to be righteous, it doesn't mean that we have all the right living stuff going on just yet. Right? Righteousness has to do with standing 
more than with living. Now the living will follow, and we'll look at that in just a moment. But it doesn't start with that. It doesn't start with the externals. It starts with the internals. God wants to get the internal stuff right, and then the external stuff will follow. And the internal stuff is you got to know that you are in right standing with God. That's what you need to know. You've got to know that God will never leave you, that he will never forsake you, that he will never reject you, that he will never judge you, that you can run into his presence and run into his wide open arms of love. No matter where you are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, your God loves you and he has given you right standing so that you could run to him and never fear running to, into his presence you know in the church kind of gives you this picture of this angry god that's in heaven with a lightning bolt waiting for you to mess up so that he can zap you <laughs> that's that's not the image of god it's not the picture of god what jesus did was jesus bore your sin he paid your penalty god's wrath that could have been poured out on you wasn't it was poured out on jesus so that you'd never have to fear God rejecting you. And you would never have to fear God's judgment. Because Jesus took your judgment on himself. So here you could say it this way, praise the Lord. That righteousness is the ability to enter God's presence with no fear of rejection or judgment. No, God's never going to reject me. God's never going to leave me. He's never going to forsake me. He will always be a constant help in my times of need. I can go boldly into his presence whenever I need him to find either mercy or to find help. I can boldly run to my father. Now, the reason why this is so important is because it's God's love that changes us. See, and you can't enter into God's love if you're fearing him. You've got to know that there's no reason to fear. That you can run into his arms of love at any moment because when you run into his love, his love starts to do a work in your life. Matter of fact, his love begins to change your heart. It's God's love that changes our hearts. And once hearts are changed, that's when actions change. And see, what we try to do is we put the cart before the horse. We try to change all of our actions and we focus on righteousness as it relates to what we do. But no, 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 no. Righteousness is right standing so we can run into God's presence. In God's presence, he starts to love us. In his love, our heart begins to change. And out of the change of heart, the actions follow. So God's righteousness is a gift that he wants to give you so that you'll have confidence to always run into his presence. Because if you run into his presence every day, every day, just run into the presence of God. But I messed up. Doesn't matter. Run into the presence of God. He's never going to reject you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He's never going to turn his back on you. He's never going to judge you. You're not going to find judgment. You're going to find mercy. You're going to find help in your time of need. Run into his presence every day and watch how God's presence begins to alter your heart. And out of that, all of a sudden, he works miracles through your life. See, this is effortless, lasting change when we do it God's way. So, praise the Lord. Romans chapter 3, verse 20 through 22, it says, No one will be declared righteous in the sight of God by observing the law. Nobody. Nobody will ever be righteous in the sight of God by doing all the right stuff. Because the Bible tells us that our righteousness, no matter how good we do, it's filthy rags. Our righteousness doesn't, man, all have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God. So we can't look to our works for righteousness. We have to look to the, to the Lord, the Savior, Jesus. He's the foundation for our righteousness. And it's because of Jesus that we can run into the presence of God and never have to fear rejection or judgment. Jesus took all of our sin on himself so that our relationship with God would be freely restored. It's a gift. 
that God wants to give you if you just take it. Now, it doesn't come through the law. Nobody will be declared righteous in the sight of God by what we do. Law can't save us. Law can't make us righteous. Just makes us more aware of what sin is. Then it goes on to tell us how we get this righteousness. Now, a righteousness from God. Notice, once again, it's from God. It's not from the law. It's not from our performance. It's a gift that God wants to give. And it's apart from the law. A righteousness has been made known by which the law and the prophets testified. So so in the Old Testament, it all has it in there. Amen. Like it all foretold that Jesus would come and that Jesus would make us right with God. So so it's 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 in the law. It's in the prophets. They all talked about it. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. It comes through Jesus alone. So you can't get right standing with God any other way. There's no other way that anybody can get saved. There's no other way that we can approach the presence of a holy God without the finished work of Jesus. It's all because of Jesus. Jesus is the way back to the Father. He's the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through Him because it's through Him He's the one that offers the gift of righteousness. You can't work for it. You can't earn it. You can't do enough to deserve it. You have to simply, freely receive it. God, you're never going to reject me. You're always going to embrace me. You're always going to love me. You're never going to judge me. You're going to be there for me, and you're never going to leave me. You are a constant help in time of need. You're my best friend. And why? Because of what Jesus did for me. He opened up the door so that I could have this type of right standing with you. It's not because of what I've done. It's because of what Jesus has done. It's apart from the law. It's a free gift that you give through your son, Jesus Christ. And that's why we need to believe on Jesus. Because Jesus is the way to this righteousness. Amen. So righteousness is when you feel qualified for God's love and his blessings and his promises. You feel qualified for God's love. You feel qualified for his blessings. You feel qualified for the promises of God simply because of what Jesus has done for you. Amen. Now, here goes works righteousness, though, is when you feel like you've got to earn God's love, when you feel like you've got to earn God's blessings, when you feel like you've got to earn God's promises. And and, and here's the deal. That's works righteousness. So if you feel like you've got to earn it, I've got to earn your love, God. I've got to earn your blessing. I've got to earn your promises. You're not going to do this miracle in my life unless I earn it. I've got to do enough to get you to. If that's that's in your heart like at all, you ain't ready for any solid food. You're not not ready for heavy revies. You're not ready for the solid stuff. If any of that is in your heart at all, you need the milk of righteousness. You don't need to move on from here yet. You need to stay right here. God, you love me. God, you'll never judge me. God, you're for me. God, you're not against me. And not because of what I've done, but because of what Jesus has done. You're going to have to renew your mind to the righteousness of God that you have in Christ Jesus. You have right standing with God because of Christ alone. And until you get that, you you can't even start the foundation process. There are six foundational truths, and you can't even get there till you get this. You've got to grow up into God. The way you do that, the way you become mature, is through feeding on the milk of righteousness. God, you are for me. You're not against me. I don't have to earn your love. It's a free gift that you've given through Jesus. All the blessings and your promises are yes and amen to me because I'm in Christ Jesus. Not because of what I've done, but because of what Jesus has done. I am qualified for every blessing, but I didn't qualify myself. Jesus qualified me. And I thank you, God, who who through Christ Jesus has qualified me for the blessings and the promises that are in your word. See, it all has to be the foundational issue. I'm right with you because of what Jesus has done, not because of what I have done. And so the Bible tells us in Proverbs 24, 16, that the righteous or the godly men, they, righteous men, 
godly men, they may trip up seven times. They might mess up seven. They get it wrong seven times. But each time they rise again. Amen. So here's the picture. The picture is that righteousness is not that you never make a mistake because righteous people, they might make mistakes seven times. The question is, do you get up and do you get back into the presence of the Lord? See, the, see a, a person that doesn't have a righteous consciousness, a righteous understanding, they'll fall and they won't run back into God's presence. They fear that God will be mad at them. That God will be disappointed in them. That God will judge them or that God will reject them. And he's never going to do any of those things. He's going to take his arms of love. He's going to wrap them around you. He's going to take the pieces of your life and he's going to help you put it all back together. He needs you in his presence so that his spirit has the ability to work in your heart. And all of a sudden, you'll start to see miracles in your life if you'll run right back into the presence of God. So notice that righteous people, it's not that they never mess up. <laughs> they mess up again and again. <laughs> but every time they mess up, they rise and they get back into God's presence. Here's another verse, praise the Lord, in Psalms 37, verse 23. It says that the steps of the godly are directed by the Lord. God does direct our steps. He delights in every detail of our lives. Notice that he delights in the details of your life. Though we stumble, we're not going to fall because the Lord holds them in, in his hand. Come on, the, the righteous still stumble the righteous still fall yet God still delights in every detail of their life he directs their steps and when they stumble he holds them up because they run back into his presence they don't run away from him when they mess up they run to him and that's what God wants to get in your life the concept that he is for you that he loves you that he wants you in his presence every single day. Run into his presence. No matter what you've done, get into his presence. And let him do the work that only he can do in your life. Now, here's the deal. When you were born, you were born a sinner. That's the problem with the fall of men. Adam committed sin. And because of him, we had a sin nature. And every single one of us is born with it. That's why when Jesus came on the scene, he said, you must be born again. In other words, you have to change fathers. You got to change dads. You got to be born again. Now, he wasn't talking about physical. He was talking about spiritual, a spiritual rebirth. See, here was the problem. When you were born the first time, you were born spiritually dead, separated from God. The relationship with God was messed up. And nothing good you did could change the fact that you were a sinner. You, you could mount up as much good things, you could do as many good things as you could possibly think of, and none of it could change the fact that you were still born with a sin nature. Now, likewise, now that you've given your life to Jesus, now that you've believed on Christ, you've now been born again. This time not with a sin nature. This time with a righteous nature. You receive the gift of righteousness. And no matter how many times you fail and may mess up and make mistakes, none of that can change the fact that you are born with a righteous nature, a gift of righteousness given by God. When you were a sinner, once again, come on, not, not, you do all the good stuff you want to do, can't change the fact that you were born with a sin nature. Now that you have been reborn, by God, accepted Jesus in your heart. <laughs> no matter how many times you fail, none of it changes the fact that you are now born again with a righteous nature. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Doesn't matter what you do. It's a gift God gave so that you would never fear rejection and you would never fear judgment. You would never feel like you have to earn God's love you would never feel like you have to earn God's blessings you would realize they are all free gifts because of the way that he loves you 
because of what Christ has done for you. Amen? So here's the deal. This doesn't give us a license to sin. Somebody said, well, you say this, it gives you people a license to sin. They'll just do whatever they want. Let me tell you something. Number one, no, you won't. If you get into the presence of the Lord, he changes you from the inside out. You start to desire to do what God delights in. It changes your life. It's no license to sin. It's a license to run back into the presence of God even when you sin. Here's the deal. Evil works, they hurt us, okay? We don't want them in our life. Sin can kill us. The wages of sin is death. We don't want sin in our life. Sin is a poison. I don't want it in my life. But I need to know that nothing can change the fact that I am now righteous because God has made me the righteous. He has made me righteous. Nothing can change the fact that we are now made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that's the issue. I don't want sin in my life, but you know what? A righteous person will stumble. He has to have the confidence, even when he stumbles, that God still loves me, that he still will bless me, that he still will lift me up and pick me up. He'll dust me off. He'll help me through whatever I'm facing. He won't leave me and he won't forsake me. He'll always be with me. And he has a constant help, especially in time of need. I can run into his presence at any moment, no matter what I've done, and find loving arms wide open to bring mercy and help into my life, to bring grace into my life, to bring power into my life. All I've got to do is run back into the presence of God. I don't want to sin. I want to get out of it. But there's times that I'm going to stumble. And even when I stumble, it can't change the fact, nothing can change the fact that I am now made righteous by God himself. God gave me a gift of right standing with him. You have that gift of righteousness. Romans chapter 9, verse 30 through 33, it says this, What shall we say then? The Gentiles, they did not pursue righteousness. They weren't even looking for it. They were just doing their thing. And yet they've obtained it. A righteousness that is by faith. And then Israel, who pursued a law of righteousness, they were pursuing it. They were trying to get it. And they could not attain it. Well, why not? Why couldn't they? Well, it goes on to tell us why. Because they pursued it not by faith, but as it were by works. They were trying to do it on their own. They were trying to, make it, they were trying to earn it. They didn't realize that their righteousness is filthy rags. They can never earn it. They've got to receive it as a gift. So they stumbled over the stumbling stone. As it is written, see, I lay in Zion a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. And the one who trusts in him, Jesus, will never be put to shame. Now, Jesus is not the stumbling stone. <laughs> Righteousness by faith is the stumbling stone. And religious people are stumbling over it all the time. I've got to earn God's love. I've got to earn God's acceptance. I've got to earn God's blessings. I've got to earn God's favor. I've got to earn. I've got to earn. I've got to work. I've got to do. I, I, I. And their focus is on them instead of on the foundation. What's the foundation, folks? It is Jesus Christ alone. That's the foundation. No, my eyes aren't on me. They're on him. Amen? Man, my, my faith is in what he has done for me. I don't have to earn God's love. I just got to receive it. I don't have to earn God's favor. I just got to receive it. Don't have to earn his blessings. Don't have to earn his promises. They're all yes and amen to those that are in Christ Jesus. I just got to receive it. And I receive it by faith. I realize, man, all this is mine because of what Jesus has done for me. His death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, it has changed everything in my relationship with God. It's changed everything in my Christian experience. And so you could say it this way, that Jesus gives us right standing with God. It is not our works. And this is the foundation principle. This is the milk 
that grows us up and gets us prepared for the deeper things of God, for the solid food. It all starts here. <laughs> it ain't about me. It's about what Jesus has done for me.